Hi, this is David. Welcome to part one, topic one, Elton, chapters 5, 13, and 14, which are primarily concerned with the capital asset pricing model. There is a single associated workbook for those that, that happen to be using learning spreadsheets. That workbook is T1.2, Elton, CAPM, that's short for capital asset pricing model. Sometimes we just call that the CAPM model. And then in that workbook, there are four worksheets. We have chapter two for chapter five, two for chapter 13. In terms of exam relevance, the green high indicates uh, highly relevant, and then the orange is medium relevant. So we've got portfolio possibilities curve, the market portfolio, and then the capital market line and the securities market line, which really implements the capital asset pricing model. So four worksheets in one workbook. And we start with chapter five, Elton on delineating efficient portfolios. And so here's a really basic application. We start with the expected return. So this would also be the uh, first moment of the distribution or the weighted average, if you will. And the expected return here in Elton's note, note, notation is just a weighted average of the component assets. So as we often do in um, finance, we start with the basic two asset portfolio. Pretty much everything we do here can be extended to N assets. And then we just flip over into matrix notation. But we start with two assets, very typical. And then the fraction of the portfolio is multiplied by the expected return of each of the components gives us the expected return. So for example, if we have a two asset portfolio, it's a mix of 40% A and 60% B, where B has the higher return of 16% versus 10. And then we're, so this portfolio here gives us everything we need to know to compute the expected return. It's just a weighted average of the two components. A weighted average of the 10 and 16 gives us a number that's in between the 10 and 16. Sometimes I like, it's helpful to do things just like eyeball check. Um, it's not a robust check, but just want to see that, well, in this case here, we're, we're, we've got a mix of long uh, assets. We should end up with a number that's in between 10 and 16 as we do. Okay, then the second moment is the variance or the volatility. So volatility here we, is uh, is going to tend to mean annualized standard deviations. A so volatility for our purposes really is a synonym with standard deviation. And here we've got the formula for the volatility of a two asset portfolio. This is the sort of thing you need to memorize. If you're studying carefully enough for the FRM, by the time you get the exam, you will have done it enough that you won't need to memorize it really. It's so familiar. You can absolutely expect to be tested on this. Notice we've got here an outer brackets that takes a square root.